I'm going to demonstrate UV unwrapping using this bear. So um, the first thing is uh, assigning a material that has uh, a UV checker. There's another video up going over the procedural versus a file-based checker node. Uh, I've already set that up, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit 6 and turn that on. So as you can see, uh, typically when you model, um, your model is going to end up with UVs that are just all over the place. So it's not really a good, a good starting place for UVing uh, when you're done modeling. You generally have to start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up uh, in a save layout. So I have perspective and UV here. And I'm just going to maximize that by pressing control space bar so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So uh, I'll go ahead and select this. and. Uh, this is not really all of the UVs. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm seeing here right now. Um, that looks better, um, but there's still there's something a little quirky about what Maya is displaying uh, right now, which I, I probably it's probably my video card. This uh, this thing is just awful with uh, with dealing with 2D stuff like UVs. I don't know why. Um, it's a good gaming card, just doesn't work well with Maya. So. Um, Okay, so I was about to throw them under the bus, but I'll, I'll refrain. So at any rate, uh, what I want to do to start with is probably just do a UV projection uh, uh, of this from maybe the Z direction, just so I get rid of all the seams. So if I turn on seams, um, it's actually not cut up all that bad right now. Um, so it's, pr it's actually pretty usable um, as it is. Um, but let me go ahead and just do a projection directly from the front. And again, I'll just do it as a planar map, uh, bounding box, z-axis. Make sure um, these guys are on. It doesn't really matter about deformers. I'm not dealing with that right now anyways. Um, so as you can see, it just does a straight on projection. And there are no seams now. Um, so now we'll only have seams where we choose to put them. Um, so this is a good, really good starting place. Probably a good idea to go ahead and, and do that sort of thing. Uh, it's totally up to you. Um, if you want to, uh, sometimes it can take some of the work out by just working on half of your model and then just mirroring it over. So if I wanted to do that, let's turn off reflection here as well. Um, so I just have half the model selected here. I'll just get rid of that half. And then I just UV this half, which makes it easy to see everything. Uh, and then I'll just mirror that over. So now I'm basically ready to start uh, unwrapping this thing. And what you need to think about is sort of like um, a cloth pattern. Um, or if you have a stuffed animal, look at where the seams are. That's likely where you're going to have to put seams here. Um, and one good way to think about it is if you were to lay a piece of paper down and try to wrap it around the edges of something, could you do it without wrinkling it severely? If you wrinkle it severely, then you're adding distortion uh, when you wrap something over that. So if I laid a piece of paper out here, it could wrap around this side here, but even coming from this edge, this edge, and this edge, you can't really do that effectively. There would be some serious wrinkling happen across these areas. So you can push uh, you know, UVs a little bit harder than that. You think of them more like spandex maybe or something uh, as they wrap around a surface. But uh, that's the general idea is where a piece of paper would wrinkle, like if you just laid a piece of paper on it and tried to wrap it around those corners, like you're wrapping a Christmas present or something like that. Um, then um, you know where you can't do that without wrinkling it, you need to put a cut into it. And uh, I'll just go ahead and get into it, and you'll see what that looks like. So first, let me just start with a leg here. Uh, uh, one thing you might want to do is just double click an edge loop and see how it goes around. This is probably the most logical place to cut um, to cut this leg off. I could potentially do it from here around this span and that would be better at the front but at the back it'd be um, a little bit awkward. Um, so I could do either one of those. I'm just going to choose this one uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, and cut that. Just use the cut tool here and automatically you'll see that becomes a seam. Those are no longer uh, connected and one way to test that is just select a UV uh, on one piece of it and then control right click and choose to shell and see it only selects all the contiguous pieces so I get all the UVs that are uh, connected uh, over here and over here that are selected so for this I can't do the foot um, in the same way so I'm going to go ahead and uh, select another uh, edge loop here and just cut that one as well and now if you think of this kind of like a sleeve of a shirt uh, basically you need to have a seam where that cloth starts and comes around and stops and gets sewn back together. Otherwise you can't really 
um, get it to wrap around. It's just same thing as like a, a two liter bottle. You know, it's not like a sleeve that they make that slips over. It's like it's a flat sheet that just gets wrapped around the surface. And that's what we're doing with UVing. So I'll just pick a pick a place, uh, maybe from here to here, and I'm gonna click one edge and shift double click the end of the edge loop that I want to uh, select and then just cut that as well. So what that gives us now is this is going to unwrap in this direction just like think of it like a, a soda bottle and the wrapper is just going to come out around this way until it gets to this end and then you're going to have a nice flat uh, easy to lay out piece. And the method for actually laying it out uh, luckily is not by hand so I'll just grab some UVs and go to shell. You can see that it only selected the piece that I wanted it to and then I'm going to use um, unfold selected. If you right click you'll get the options um, and in this case um, this is basically what I want. Uh, if you're having trouble with a local solver it's not doing quite what you want you can push it towards the global solver uh, but typically local solver works really well. Uh, I want to pin all of the unselected UVs that way nothing else gets unwrapped except for what I have selected and then I probably don't really need to have any unfold constraint on right now. I'll just let um, the computer figure it out um, and see what it comes up with. So I'll say OK. And this is what you get out of that. So this is decently well done. It looks like there's actually a little bit of a, a size issue. If you see here to here, um, that's looking a little on the, on the rough side. Uh, so uh, that actually could be a little bit cleaner than it ended up, uh, although this is not, not too bad. The distortion is not too bad in here. You can understand as it comes around this corner that it's not going to be able to make this bend and this bend without distorting. But I don't want to add another seam, so uh, I'm going to be okay with the amount of distortion that's added here. Now I could do this, I'm just going to undo that real quick. Now I could do this with some of the constraints on uh, and see what, what this produces. So first let me just go ahead and try it with the vertical constraint. Say apply. And as you can see, it's just going to hold everything where it was vertically, uh, which is not going to work for us. Horizontal in this case, since they're not really unwrapped at all, um, actually is going to produce a much better result. I thought that wouldn't do as uh, high quality as it ended up doing. That actually looks like a, a really decent unwrap. Uh, have some distortion down here, as you can see, going up the leg. It definitely has some distortion in it, um, but this uh, is cleaner as these two pieces come together around the seam, uh, and the distortion is really um, just from uh, from the lower part to the higher part because we constrained it. So uh, I think that this is probably the best of those and I'm just going to leave that uh, sort of as it scaled it and just move it out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. And I'll just move these pieces out of the way as I do them. It doesn't really matter where they go as long as they're not overlapping because then it's just, it's just easier to deal with it if it's out of the way. Uh, and then I'll put them all back together to do the layout. So that's one thing you can do, just, um, just a straight unfold. Another way you might approach this is doing uh, uh, like a cylindrical unwrap or something like that. In which case what you would do is you would just make an, uh, a face loop selection and then expand that out um, to where whenever it hits the point. Looks like I, I may have done sort of one in the wrong way. So maybe something like that um, is reasonable and that looks like a, a reasonable piece that I might choose to do. So uh, typically I would work on this the way I showed you the leg where I just add seams wherever I felt like they were needed. But this is another way you can work if you want to. Uh, so select the pieces that look like they fit into a certain projection type. Like this fits into a cylindrical projection pretty easily. And I'll go ahead and just make a cylindrical map out of that. And uh, for this I just need to reorient this um, so that it matches um, what I'm trying to do here. So I'll just click the little T and then click the arrow here. And you can see that this actually just needs to be rotated around. So um, I'm, I'm going to rotate it uh, this way and then this way and now you can see that that cylinder actually aligns uh, with the arm and it sort of makes sense what's happening over here um, and then I can do a few different things to just try to even this out a little bit um, in terms of uh, the quality of the cylindrical unwrap but this is not too bad right now what I'd want to do is just rotate it so the seam goes uh, where I wanted it. it looks like I missed my arrow or my corner. Okay, so you can see the seam moving here. And that's probably just about where I'd want that seam to end up. So that looks pretty good. Um, the amount of distortion on this thing is not too bad. It's obviously pulling in, in, uh, in one direction. So I'll just uh, open this up to sort of square those guys up a little bit. It looks like that worked. 
these are distorted pretty heavily um, so this could probably also use a little bit of unwrap especially here so you notice how really severely distorted this is and this just may need a, a little bit of a seam uh, added to it uh, or alternatively these faces here could be part of the body section and in fact it, you know on reflection here it really does look like these should be part of the body and the arm should start right at the uh, edge of the shoulder here I thought that's where we were but I, I projected it uh, one extra face here so this is another way you could work and to fix the amount of distortion that uh, still remains on this I'll select the UVs and then do an unwrap on those again uh, just choosing uh, one of the constraint types or no constraint uh, depending on uh, what you need. So in this case, uh, maybe I'll try to constrain this thing uh, vertically and see what we get. So it did a better job. These look definitely uh, better than they did with just this straight cylindrical unwrap, but you can see there's still a significant amount of distortion in this thing. So let me try to let this thing just do what it wants to do. So that ends up with a really bent map Again, we have the same problem at the seam. There's a significant size difference here. Um, so given the amount of distortion that was, I think this is probably the, uh, the layout I'd start with. And you can bend things around and, and make them work as you need them to. So um, I can still move these UVs manually. I can still uh, smear things around with the smear tool. I can still uh, use the lattice tools and, and sort of warp these things out to a, to a better layout. But typically when you see this kind of distortion in a mesh after you do something, really that generally means that your seams are either in the not not in the right place or you don't have enough seams. So this amount of distortion between here and here is significant enough that um, I would consider adding more seams to this and, uh, and uh, making it work a different way. Uh, so in this case probably what I would do is just remove these guys here from that. So I'll just go ahead and uh, make that selection. I'm just going to cut them out. Uh, grab this shell as a separate unit here and then do an unfold one more time and see what that does. Um, still a little on the ugly side uh, in my opinion here so I'll try this uh, one more time see if that cleans us up at all. Didn't really help. Uh, that helped a little bit. This one's still distorted through here. This corner here is just pretty extreme so uh, you know, if I if I wanted to, I could add a, another cut specifically in this place right here, and then unfold it. Let me just go ahead and do that, uh, so you see that. I'll go ahead and cut that, and then uh, just do that unfold again on this area, and it'll be able to clean that up. You can see here it has some overlap now, so I'd need to go through and and uh, resolve that. In this case. I don't probably want it to uh, do that, so I'm just going to leave these guys sewn up. I just wanted to uh, show you how that would work. Okay, so this is probably somewhat reasonable. The UVs don't look great um, still through here, um, so I'd want to go through and um, and try to clean this up a little further than I have it. Uh, definitely not fantastic, but this is just another way uh, to work. And you see, you get the same result where uh, manually I cut around the bottom and the top and up here it was cut automatically by me doing a new projection type and then I moved the uh, seam where I wanted it using the manipulator instead of making the cut myself manually. Uh, two means to the same end basically. Um, so that's it for this one. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do another video. I think this one's getting a little on the long side. Do another video where I continue on with this.